Could you imagine Justin Jefferson on the San Francisco 49ers? Well, you might be asking, like, why would you even ask that question? He just signed a mega deal with the Vikings. Well, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because, according to Adam Schefter, the San Francisco 49ers reached out to the Minnesota Vikings before the draft to see if they could trade for Justin Jefferson. Now, I know there's been so many trade rumors swirling around the San Francisco 49ers regarding Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, and I'm sure some other players that have not even been named, but that's typically how it goes every offseason. Just, just because we haven't heard about it doesn't mean it's not happening. So it's really interesting to hear 49ers picked up the phone and called and said, hey, what's it going to take to get Justin Jefferson well, those calls uh, didn't go too far as you would expect, but take a listen to Adam Schefter kind of explaining why and how the San Francisco 49ers reached out to the Minnesota Vikings via his podcast right here. That kind of leads me to topic number three, Adam, and I'm going to stick on this Jay Jettis train. Did it ever get to a spot behind the scenes where the Vikings were actually entertaining, yeah. like actually entertaining the idea of moving Justin Jefferson? Never ever got close there were teams that reached out daniel the new york jets reached out about justin Ooh, jefferson Did wow you know that guy can you imagine justin jefferson and garrett wilson and aaron Rodgers? that would be unreal the indianapolis colts reached out about justin jefferson you know that oh, wow that'd be a great yeah i mean anthony richardson would love a wide receiver yeah. like that in his wide receiving core the 49ers reached out about Justin Jefferson. You know that? Okay, they're just getting greedy at this point, Adam. They certainly don't need another wide receiver. Well, this was all before the draft. And every team that called the, the Vikings before the draft was told we're not trading him. The conversations went nowhere with anybody. So it was a moot point. And by the way, there should have been 31 teams that were calling the Vikings and checking it to see if there was any way that they would trade the wide receiver who wanted a new deal, who they struggled to get a new deal done with. Everybody should have called, like whoever it was. And so there were some teams, a group of them, that checked in. Every one of them that called the Vikings was turned away right away and was wow. told, we're not dealing the guy. And so it never went anywhere because this was the day that Minnesota envisioned. You're not trading away a receiver who's done everything that Justin Jefferson has, who set all these marks that he has, who has a record amount of receiving yards in his first four years, who has 30 touchdowns, who was the offensive player of the year in 2022, who averages 98.3 yards per game, the most in NFL history for any career span. So they weren't trading him. It's a moot point. It doesn't matter who called, they weren't trading him. Now, obviously, if the San Francisco 49ers were going to trade for Justin Jefferson, that'd be absolutely wild. It would just be nuts. And again, it makes you kind of think about like, well, obviously, they would have to give something up of uh, big time value, whether that was Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, maybe a combination of the both. I don't know what it would take to get Justin Jefferson, but you also have to have that conversation with yourself of, well, if the 49ers made a call and you just saw the deal that Justin Jefferson got, which was $35 million per year on average, $140 million over the length of the deal, and $88.7 million fully guaranteed. Were the San Francisco 49ers prepared to give Justin Jefferson a deal of that magnitude? You would have to ask yourself, yeah, probably, if they were going to at least, to, I guess, get some information. And again, that could have just been it information gathering and as you heard from adam schefter all 31 teams should have been calling on justin jefferson's availability and just because you're calling on someone to get a price check or or trying to see just gauge interest in a potential trade that happens all the time man so i i, I take it with a grain of salt I, I don't think this is like a crazy situation i can guarantee there are so many trades or potential trades or inquiries of trades that have have just gone uh, you know unnoticed unreported and if you heard about them you'd be like oh my gosh but i think it's just standard operating procedure in the nfl and i think because they do such a good job of keeping these stories under wraps and not allowing them to come to fruition that's typically when you know 
we hear about it, we're like, we perk up a little bit. We're like, oh, the 49ers called on Justin Jefferson. Oh, that's interesting. Could you imagine Justin Jefferson, Christian McCaffrey, George Kittle, Brock Purdy? And again, I don't know who the other wide receivers would be because I would imagine the 49ers would have to trade one of those guys, whether it's Brandon Ayuk or Debo Samuel, or I don't know, would they have packaged both of them to send over to the Vikings? It's just an interesting scenario, but I'm curious to know what you guys think. Would you have sent both the wide receivers for the 49ers over to the Vikings in exchange for Justin Jefferson? I mean, the 49ers had a shot at him. They had a shot at him and they had a shot at Justin Jefferson and CeeDee Lamb in the draft. Obviously, they opted to go Javon Kinlaw at pick 14 after they had a pick swap with the Tampa Bay Bucks, who ultimately took Tristan Wirfs in that 13th hole uh, in which they received for trading DeForest Buckner. Um, but, you know, I remember in the, that's the that's the year they also traded. Up, that's the same draft class where they got Brandon Ayuk. They traded back up into the first round into the mid 20s. And they were able to get B.A. So they, they were able to hit on B.A. And obviously they're they're about to make him a top 10 paid wide receiver in the league. So it, it was a good draft pick. But uh, it's just interesting, you know, that the, the, the way that everything played out, like what if the 49ers took CeeDee Lamb at 14 or at 13? What if the 49ers traded back into the late teens and took Justin Jefferson and acquired additional draft capital. Uh, I told you guys in my very final mock draft um, of that particular year, my final mock had me trading back into the, I think pick 20 and selecting Justin Jefferson because I was a huge Justin Jefferson guy uh, coming out of LSU. So there are, you know, what ifs with this situation, um, but it is interesting. Again, this is just something that we don't hear typically. We don't hear too often. So it's always uh, interesting when we can get some behind the scenes insight from insiders like this who, again, are are plugged in. I know a lot of people, especially 49er fans, have soured on Adam Schefter after the whole Mac Jones at three situation. Um, but, uh, so I can already imagine some of the comments already being like, oh, we don't, we don't listen to Adam Schefter around these parts. Uh, but again, it doesn't change the fact that he is plugged in and, and he hears all these types of things because that's what his job is. His job is to find these nuggets and report them. And so he brought it up in his podcast and it just, it, it makes you think, what if? What if? What could have been? Uh, the butterfly effects of the NFL are pretty crazy. We just talked about yesterday on the channel about how the Washington Commanders sniped the 49ers from drafting Ben Sinnott. That led to the 49ers drafting Renardo Green. What is that butterfly effect going to look like three, four, five years down the road? Always, always an interesting conversation when talking about the NFL. But let me know what you guys think about this whole situation with Justin Jefferson. Let me know in the comments below. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more updates.